How does Allah seek to wake the reader of the Qur'an up to reality? How does Allah change our mindset, our worldview? He essentially uses three things. There are fundamentally three things that He uses. Okay, You can say three ways to wake up to reality. The first of them, the one that's being highlighted in this surah, is history or time. So you'll, you'll place, find lots of places in the Qur'an where Allah is talking about things that happened a long time ago. Prophets that came a long time ago, incidents that occurred a long time ago, nations that came a long time ago, and he'll make reference to them and what they went through. Learn from the past. Learn from the mistakes of others, and take role models from those who came much before you. Right? Learn from their best practices too. That is le- lessons from history. That's one way to open your eyes. So when we become oblivious to history, one of those doors by which we can actually you know, face reality is closed. When we're not interested in that, and we reduce that to just old stories, then one opportunity you and I had to actually see life for what it really is, is gone. And that's actually arguably the most recurring, one of the most recurring themes in the Qur'an, is looking at time that's already passed. By the way, I keep calling this surah a summary of the entire Qur'an. The only other surah that you can definitively call a summary of the entire Qur'an is Surah Al-Fatiha, isn't it? And even in Surah Al-Fatiha, when we asked Allah for guidance, the key element of guidance was the straight path, isn't it? Guide us to and through and along the straight path. And then we mentioned, Surat al-Ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim waladdalin. And we mentioned that in the past. The path of those you already showered with favor. Meaning they're already dead and gone. But we can look back and find those that you showered with faith. Not the ones who, who are recipients of rage, nor the lost. Those are gonna, be, when, when we find those people in the Quran, those are all people across history. Okay? So, that's one major avenue. The other two avenues are also critical. The other two avenues are, Allah wants you to pay attention to what's been created around you and me. He wants us to look at the sky differently. He wants me to look at the earth differently. He wants me to look at the bird differently. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِضْنَا مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّا إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ He's changing my view of a single bird just flying across the sky. Haven't they looked at the bird above them that spreads its wings and contracts them? Who do you think is holding them in the air if not the most loving, the most merciful? That bird is reminding me of how much Allah loves me. Because it's out of his love and his care that he lets its wings expand and then lets its wings collapse. He's holding it in the air. He's not letting it fall. That's what he's doing every time it takes flight. That's Allah's love. Like our emotional bond with Allah. Not just our intellectual. It's not, you know, we reduce this to a scientific thing. Look at all this amazing creation. There has to be a God. It's not just that. When you observe creation around you, you develop an emotional bond with Allah. You see Allah's mercy, you see Allah's love, you see Allah's planning. When you pay attention to the orange you're about to peel and eat, and you just stop there and you reflect, where did this orange come from? It was a seed not too long ago. And, and before it was a seed of a tree, and that Allah allowed that tree to grow, and eventually that fruit to come, and that fruit to be picked, I don't know where it was picked from, Brazil, California, halfway around the planet, I don't know where. And it sat on some truck, and maybe on a plane, and then on a grocery store, and then your mom went and did the groceries and picked it up. It went through so many journeys, and made its way all the way to your plate. You know, فَالْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ People should take a good look at the food they're eating. How did it, how did it get to them? What mechanism of delivery did Allah employ so that you and I can enjoy food? The simple things like food, you know. When He mentions in Surah Al-Rahman, you know, ذات الأكمام والنخل ذات الأكمام, He mentions Allah didn't just make palm trees and fruits; He made palm trees that have bunches, and every fruit is covered, wrapped in what you can call gift wrapping. Like if human beings just need carbohydrates and proteins and certain sugars and whatever else, you can get those in a very nasty tasting mix and you'll be sustained. But Allah didn't just give us that food, He made it look beautiful, He gift wrapped it, 
and even the the wrapping itself the peel of a banana the peel of an orange when you take a Twix or a Kit Kat and you take the wrapper and you throw it away, it poisons the earth. When you take the peel of an orange or a banana or whatever else, it feeds the earth. Even the peel feeds the earth. It smells good. It didn't have to smell good. We could have been we could have been fed like horses are fed, off the ground. You know, they're just munching off of whatever's on the ground. Or cows are fed. We are fed with such delicate care. Just if a human being just contemplates on the world Allah has made around him and her. It makes us become grateful creatures. It, cha- it changes our point of view. That's another eye-opener for us. But when we become oblivious and start thinking we're entitled to everything, you know, when we become the kind of people that open the fridge and say, where is the Pepsi? Oh God, no Pepsi? <sighs> How am I supposed to eat this burger now? <laughs> you know? Because with water, this won't even go down my throat. This is like, you know, adabun shadid. Like, I can't do it. That entitlement is our eyes are closed to reality. Our eyes are not open to reality. So the first was history, and the second is the world around us. The third way by which Allah allows us to see is His own words. The third and perhaps even the most powerful. It's actually only because of His word we're allowed to take, we are able to take full advantage of the first two. I wouldn't have looked at food the same way if Quran didn't inspire me to. I would never have thought about history the way I would if Allah's words didn't inspire me to. You understand? So it's that third one, which is Allah's own words. Allah has decided to talk to us. And you know, when somebody talks to you, gives you a heart to heart, and you're like, wow, my perspective totally changed after you spoke to me. That's what Quran is. A counsel, a heartfelt counsel has come to you from your God, from your master. You know? Risalati Rabbi Qur'an calls it, letters from my master. Now somebody writes you a loving letter. Now nowadays especially, we are people of email or you know Instagram or Snap messages or WhatsApp messages or text messages. Somebody takes the time out to write something to you and mail it to you handwritten. It's a sentimental value to somebody went out of their way, sent you a card. That's a big deal. There's not an e-card. It's not some, some file, it's not an emoji, it actually took an effort. It's an expression of something. What pains, what painstaking delivery did Qur'an come to us from? From the seventh heaven, all the way to you and me, from him. That already changes our point of view, but the more we engage with the Qur'an, the more eyes open. And the more we get further away from it, the more eyes start becoming closed. And the first two doors that were open, even they start shutting down. Okay? By the way, those first two, a good look at history and a good look at the world around us, we were capable of, Allah made us capable of, even if we, had no, we hadn't heard a single word of the Qur'an. We were capable of that. But after the Qur'an came, we have no excuse but to take advantage of all three. You understand? And so when you study the Qur'an, especially Makkan Qur'an, you have to see which one of those three is Allah opening my eyes with. There are things only Allah can tell me I can't know, like... The afterlife, judgment day. You know, certain truths that there's no way I would have known. That's only going to come from Allah's word, that third avenue.